you get your Bible. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Acts the 12th chapter, Acts the 12th chapter. Starting at the first verse, don't stop praising him. I'm going to get right out the way, and I'm just going to say run, and y'all just run. How about we do that? How about we do that? I'll be about five to seven minutes, and y'all just run. Praise the Lord like it's your last time. Like it's your last, like your feet are on fire. How about that? How about that? I'll talk for five minutes, and you run. Is that all right? I see the first one smiling. You're going to be the first one running. I know. I, 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 I caught your spirit already. I did. I did. Hallelujah. Acts the 12th chapter. Acts the 12th chapter. First verse. Hallelujah. I'm in the King James Version. Verses 1 through 16. And we're talking about prayer. Amen. I'm stuck on prayer. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm two hours away, but I'm doing my best to get here as much as possible to be with you guys in prayer. Because I'm looking forward to the manifestation of the teaching. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's going to be a manifestation. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know with whom. But it's going to come. Amen. Amen. It's going to be individual and corporate. Amen. Amen. We're talking about prayer and the Lord is doing something. I asked the uh, uh, minister uh, uh, East, I said, so so is, do you see a surge in prayer? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, I'll tell you about it later. Amen. Amen. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, I found out you got to teach a thing if you want it to happen. Amen. Amen. People not worshiping, you got to teach worship. That's right. That's right. That's right. People not praying, you got to teach prayer. Yeah. Yeah, people not giving, uh, <laughs> nobody will talk about giving. <laughs> but you got to teach giving, amen. Yeah. Worshipful giving, yeah. yes. amen. Yeah. And to God goes all the honor and the glory, amen. I honor, I honor, I honor our pastor, amen. Yeah. I say it publicly, yeah. he is the most awesomest pastor yeah. ever, yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. And as somebody that's been sitting under him for the last 13 years, I've seen a lot. And to God be the glory for what he's doing in his life. And I'm just trying to glean behind him. Amen. Yeah. Trying to get, get some crumbs from his table. Amen. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah. Amen. So we, we honor him. We honor his family, his wife. Amen. Yeah. I honor my boo. Amen. Yeah. Just lift your hands up. Yeah. Lift your hands up. Yeah. Amen. We both was there on this week. <laughs> Woo, I haven't been out the house since I saw y'all Tuesday. Amen. He was sick and then Wednesday I got sick. And I'm just getting up, so I'm still feeling a little weak, but I, I, I ain't speaking that. I'm claiming that God has the victory. Amen. Amen. I can do all things. All things through Christ. Amen. And he gave me the word, so I said, well, I must supposed to be preaching it today. Amen. <laughs> so the word is good anyhow. Amen. And I just asked him to just uh, breathe through me. Use this vessel. Amen. To his glory and honor. Do you have Acts the 12th chapter? And we certainly honor the other deacons, members, friends, saints, everybody in them. We honor you today. Amen. And Acts, the 12th chapter, reads as follows, starting at verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also, because it pleased somebody else. Uh -huh, that's right. <laughs> then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrinians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Here it is. But prayer was made without ceasing. Uh -huh. I'll read that one more time. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. For him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, well, the same night, same Peter night. was sleeping between two soldiers. So you can rest when somebody's praying. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you find yourself resting good, that means somebody's been praying. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. So, so, so here it is. So uh, uh, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. They made prayer for him without ceasing. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, look at and this. Behold. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. Somebody said, Get up quickly. Get up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast 
cast thy garment about thee and follow me. <laughs> and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought that, thought that he saw a vision. Uh -huh. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate. Somebody say the iron gate. Iron. That leadeth unto the city, which openeth to him of his own accord. When you're will, in the will of God and somebody's praying, stuff opens to you on its own. <laughs> you don't have to make it come open. You don't have to push it, kick it. It opens on its own. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Uh -huh. And when he had considered, somebody say consider the thing. Consider. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, uh -huh. whose surname was Mark, well, where many were gathered, here it is again, yeah. many were gathered many, together many were praying. praying. Uh -huh. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, uh -huh. a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. Somebody said, you can't get too happy that you missed the blessing. <laughs> she opened not the gate for, the, for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly, somebody say constantly. constantly. But she constantly affirmed that, that it was even so. Then said they, it is an angel, still not believing her. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished and the word of the Lord is blessed. Father, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God said amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. On your way down, rehearse my text for today. It's at the door. It's at the door. It's at the door. Familiar passage of scripture. I've heard it preached so many times, but the Lord led me to it today as we have been teaching and talking about prayer. Amen. In the text, in the text, we find something taking place. And I declare I'll be about seven minutes. In the text, we find something. Somebody sound like they don't believe me. <laughs> She's like, all right, if you say so. Amen. In the text, we find something taking place that seems to be missing in the church today. Yeah. That is church folk praying for one another. We spend more time talking and chatting about one another and talking about a situation than praying for one another. And here we see in the text, the church is actually praying for their own. In this particular case, a church member is in trouble, in trouble. whose name is Peter. Yeah. And history tells us that Peter was not just any member. Hallelujah. But he, in modern day terms, he, he would have been equivalent to what we see as a bishop yeah. in the church today. And in the text, we see the church doing, we've been learning about the will of God, praying for leadership and everything. And, and, and we see that in the text, the church is praying for leadership. They're banding together to pray for leadership in the midst of an adverse situation. The Bible described that there were three strategic attacks of the enemy in this text. First, we see Herod had stretched his hand to vex the church, certain in the church. And let me tell you, if you're feeling like you're being vexed at this, uh, at this particular moment in time and you're in the church, then nine times out of ten, God has his hand on you. Yes. The Bible says certain in the church. Yes. Uh, if you're under heavy attack right now and, and, and you're wondering why, I just want to let you know it's nothing that you've done wrong. Well, Amen. The Bible does not say that Peter did anything wrong, uh, even though we know Peter had a past of cussing and carrying on. Right. But, but, but we don't see Peter as being the, the, in an adverse, uh, of any adverse behavior well, by Peter in this text. Uh, but we see that Peter is under attack yes. nonetheless. And, and the lesson, lesson is designed to teach us a couple things that you don't necessarily have to do anything wrong to be certain in the church well, that's well. under attack. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. Somebody's up under some stress and wonder why, why they picking with my child and why they coming against my home and I haven't done anything wrong. I've just been coming to church and doing the business of the Lord and doing what I'm supposed to do. But all of a sudden I'm under attack because I'm certain in the church. Oh my goodness. So, 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 so. Here it is. Certain in the church. And three things that are going on in the text. Herod stretched out his hands to vex certain in the church. Number two, he had just killed James, another leader in the church. And now more than ever, leadership is being under attack. The heaviness of leadership is, if some are waning, they're waning weary with the heaviness 
of it. That's why we talk about praying for leadership and honoring leadership and honoring our pastors and our bishops and our, and our people that are over us because the attack is great. Yes. Amen. I know for once I speak this morning, the attack is great. Amen. This is my first time seeing daylight in four days. Amen. The attack is great. Amen. But you must keep on going. And, and nonetheless, nevertheless, there was a there was a prayer meeting going on. Ah. Hey, there was a prayer meeting going on. Amen. So 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 I know that I'm getting up because somebody's been praying yes. for me. Amen. Amen. So there are three things that are going on. Uh, enemy stretched out his hand against certain of the church. And then number two, they had just killed James, uh, the brother of John. And, and then number three, the enemy had deepened his attack by imprisoning Peter. Amen. One of the bishops. Uh, imagine if somebody came to you and said, one of the bishops just got locked up. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. If the church wasn't praying, then they'd be praying then. Come on. Oh, come on. Uh, so how many of you know that, 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 that when the church surrenders itself to prayer, like the text says, the constant prayer, there's going to be an attack. Oh, but right. somebody prayed for yes. me. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 And the text says that the enemy stretched his hand against the church. And if you know anything about stretching your hand, it, it, it actually denotes prayer. Yeah. Amen. You hear the old saints saying, ah, oh God, stretch forth your hand. Stretch out your hand over the congregation. It denotes prayer. Amen. And the enemy has his way, but the saints of God have their way. That's right. Amen. I'm tapping into God. And all I'm saying to you today is prayer meeting is at, at holds weight with God. It has power with That's God. Right. It's That's essential right. to your course with yes. God. Yes. That's all I'm saying today. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. So there's three, three main points. And again, you can shout after this is over and run if you want. I'm going to sit down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's three points in the text that I really need you to get. To. I believe that the text is tailored to teach the church three things today as we're in the midst of learning all we can about prayer. Well, the first thing I believe the text is designed to teach us today is to maintain a spirit of expectation. Somebody say maintain a spirit of of expectation. The thing that really amazed me as I meditated on the text was that even though the Bible says that the people were careful to stay in prayer and constant prayer, there was no expectation. Mm -hmm. How can a people or a church for that matter be in constant prayer and then when the answer is at the door they fail to realize it. And the revelation is this. I asked God. I kept asking God. I've been meditating on the scripture for the last two days and I kept asking God, asking God, why weren't they expecting anything to happen? Mm -hmm. And the revelation is you can be so constant in a thing, so perpetually faithful, watch this, you can be so perpetually faithful to a thing, but somewhere along the way you can forget that your job is not just to be faithful. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm messing with somebody come on, come on. I go to church, I do what I'm supposed to do I'm there to unlock the church every Sunday da, 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 da. Your job is not just to be faithful But your job Coupled with being faithful Is to be fruitful oh, I preached a sermon one time It said faithful but not fruitful And I was talking about Hannah Hannah was on her way to worship uh, Y'all know Hannah in 1 Samuel She was on her way to worship uh, and, and she was on her way to worship faithfully The Bible said they went that way every year She was being tormented by her adversary, Panina. Y'all know the story. She was being tormented by her adversary, Panina. Every year, she was faithful, going to worship, faithful, faithful, but not producing anything. Oh, my God. Until she cried out with all her might to the Lord. Then she was producing. She was productive. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so the Lord said, so the Lord said, I, I asked him, how can, how can we keep going? How can we keep going in constant prayer and do what the Bible says? And we're not producing anything. He said, you must be fruitful. fruitful. And in like manner, when Jesus addressed the fig tree, he took me to the fig tree. Well, on his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, well, he was hungry, looking for figs. Uh -huh. It was the season for figs. Somebody say, the harvest is white. Harvest it's the white. season for souls. Uh, it was the season for figs. Come on in here. Somebody's going to catch this with me in a minute. It was the season for the fig tree to produce. It's the season for Antioch to be productive. Oh, but there was nothing on the tree. Then Jesus cursed the tree, uh -huh. and the disciples marveled at what Jesus did. So then Jesus took this opportunity, if you go to Matthew uh, the 21st chapter, Jesus took this opportunity to teach a lesson, I found it interesting, on prayer. 
God. Somebody read that in your leisure. Huh? Then Jesus took the opportunity to teach us on prayer. Huh? Your prayers should produce fruit. fruit. Yes. Yes. Your faithfulness should produce fruit. Yes. There's no sense pr uh, putting plain seeds of apples and not looking for an apple. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. There's no sense of uh, planting a seed uh, in the offering and not, and not believing God for the return. Yes. There's no sense in singing, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endure forever. And then when the first sign of trouble comes, you go and run and tuck tail and run and hide. Either he's good or he's not. Either he can do exceeding abundantly above what we ask of him, or he already can't. Hallelujah. Put some faith to it. So, 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 so. The fig tree, the fig tree. I'll back up. If our prayers are not producing results, then we all need to check ourselves because the failure is not God. The failure lies with us. The fig tree is a picture of the spiritual fruitlessness of the church. In Matthew, the 21st chapter, after Jesus curses the fig tree for not being fruitful, he immediately begins to speak on prayer. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what's done what, what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to a mountain, ah, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Yes. Yes. All right, God. So I ask you today, what are you believing God for? God, oh, y'all, y'all too quiet. What are you believing God for? Yes. Are you expecting a miracle? Yes. Uh, are you expecting a breakthrough? Are you expecting the pews to be filled? Are you expecting God to move supernaturally? Are you expecting a miracle in your child's life? Are you expecting God to stretch out his hand over your home, over your job, over your household? What are you looking for? Yeah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost told me to come after doubt today. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Holy Ghost said, I'm coming after unbelief today. Well, yeah. He said, I'm coming after your unbearing, your bear, your unfruitful state, your barrenness today. My he said, it's time for you to produce both individually and corporately. My <laughs> he says, what are you looking for? Mm. If you can name it, if you can articulate that thing, God says it's yours. It's yours. one time and the evangelist was making a, uh, oh I forget her name oh I forget her name, she's from uh, from uh, Orange County, Jersey somewhere and she was making a, 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 a point and she held up a $20 bill and she said uh, somebody needs some money and uh, one of the girls from way in the back just came jetting up, I mean she ran with all her might and snatched that $20 out and she said see that girl's gonna get what she needs <laughs> cause some of us it takes us too What am I coming to church Sunday after Sunday? What am I really looking for? Am I looking for a preacher to put me in the pool? Go ahead. There are some things will happen when you able when you're able to articulate that thing and go to God with it yourself. And I'm gonna back back to Hannah. Hannah was able to go to God with her concerns for herself. She was go she was going to God, and the people in the church was talking about, oh, she must be drunk. Ain't that what the preacher said? There's nothing like a preacher that's off with no discernment. Oh my God, I'm, I'm uh, get in trouble now. They turn the tape off. There's nothing like a preacher that's off. Oh my God, that's why I lay before God the way I do. That's why I pray and ask God over and over again. God, is this what you want me to say? God, please give me a word to say. If it don't touch one, I need to touch somebody over here. If it don't touch that one, I need to reach that one way back there. Because I need to be on point. Oh, I need to be discerning. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 
and so and so. The Holy Ghost said, what are you looking for? Where does your expectation lie today? I need, and this is what God told me. He said, I need your expectation not only to rely in my hand, but I also need you to expect my heart. Oh, oh God. It's a word for somebody today. He said, I don't need you just to expect what I'm going to give to you, but I need you to expect my heart. So when I come to correct, when I come to chasten, don't think it not, uh, don't think it strange when I come to meet you right where you are. Yes. 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 Woo, hallelujah. Because I'm coming with my goods in my hand. I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Ghost. I'm coming with what you need. But God says I gotta correct some stuff. Yes. 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 He said, don't seek just my hand, but seek my heart. Yes. And when the church goes the heart of God. The Bible says he loved David because he was a man that was after his heart. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even know where I'm not even in my tent. I don't even know where I'm at. Hey, God. And God says when the church gets back to seeking the heart of God, then his hand will automatically come. Oh, somebody praise the Lord right there. Hallelujah. Revelation 3 and 20. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door. Somebody say it's at the door. Huh? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. The psalmist said, My soul, wait thou only upon God. Not just what he has for me, but my soul waits for him. My Look at somebody and say, what are you expecting? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Point number two, and I'm almost done. I believe the text uh, is designed to teach us uh, a second thing. And that second thing is that prayer is a process. Somebody say it's a process. It's a process. Uh -huh. right, right. The text is tailored to teach us uh, that, 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 that there are not only many dimensions to observe when it comes to prayer, but there will also be seasons of prayer when you will be asking God for something and it will seem like the Lord will be saying, what's behind door number one? <laughs> what's behind door number two? Oh, y'all seen that? What's the name of that game? It was a game show back in the 70s. Yeah, let's make a deal. Yeah, Price is one of them shows. Amen. Amen. What's behind door number two? And it'll seem like, God, well, what are you doing? Why are you taking me through these changes? Uh, notice that the Bible is careful to mention, hallelujah, that Peter had to pass through not one, but two doors before getting to the iron gate, which led to the outside of the city. Ah, this word is for someone, hallelujah, ah, they got caught at the first gate. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going, hallelujah. You haven't got to the iron gate yet. The iron gate represents sin. Whenever you see iron in scripture, anybody, by, I know you some of your Bible school students in here. If you see iron in scripture, you know that it represents the place of crushing. It represents sin. The iron gate is the place where God wants to break your will. Here it is. Here it is. Hey. hey. Uh, the iron gate is the place where God wants to break your will so his divine will can be done in your life. Somebody say prayer is a process. But I gotta get through, go through the process. I, I can't stop at one door. It's at the door, but some of you been going to this door. What's behind door number one? And you're getting stuck right there. Oh, I think I'm gonna go over here. I, I'm getting stuck over here. But God said, keep going. Yes. Hallelujah, you haven't got to the iron gate, the place of crushing.
somebody say, keep going. Keep going. Iron is a hard place. It's an element. It can't be broken down. And I've got news for you. That, can, that thing can't be broken down on its own. It's going to take much prayer. It's going to take bathing that thing in prayer. Hey, if the church is going to be everything God called it to be, it's going to take bathing that thing in prayer. It's going to take all night prayer. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take leadership. Turning down the place. Hey! Somebody say, just keep going. Just keep going. Hey, mama, 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 just keep going. The word constant in the text is the idea of being honest. Literally, it's a picture of someone stretching out all they can before something. The word constant in the Greek is the word ectinos, which was related to the medical term, describing the stretching of someone's muscles to its limits. And I got news for you today. Somebody's spiritual are about to be stretched to its limits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the same term that's used to describe the agonizing prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus prayed, as the Bible said, till sweating drops of blood. Hallelujah. Somebody say, stretch me, Lord. Hallelujah. It is in this same manner that the Lord is trying to get some of us to express ourselves today in earnest prayer because it is earnest prayer that develops spiritual muscle. It is earnest prayer that has the power, the demonstrative power of God. Why should we ask God to invest in something that we're not fully invested in? Tell the truth. <laughs> the biggest problem I find with uh, 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 preachers and worship leaders and people in the pulpit is they don't invest in their own worship. That's right. That's right. Come on and tell I'd be a foolish worship leader if I stood up here. Tell them, go ahead and praise them. And then when the sister gets down and say, go ahead and praise them, I'm sitting there staring at her. Yes. I have nothing invested. Yes. How do I expect to get a return? Right. Yes. 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 Preachers sit through the service and they just... Come on and tell the truth. Nothing invested, but when they get up to give a word, they want everybody hopping in on their feet. Yeah. Nothing invested. Yeah. Yeah. And God said, how are you going to get something yeah. from me if you have not been fully invested? Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Hallelujah. God says it's a two-way street. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then ask what you will, God says. God is saying that you and I will get will get to the door, but it's only going to come through the process. The process begins with repentance. Somebody say repent. repent. Hey, the process begins with repentance. Then when you walk by the first gate of repentance, then it moves to the gate of forgiveness. Somebody say forgive. forgive. Somebody say let it, go. let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Then it goes through the iron gate of our stubborn will. number three and I'll take my seat. Here it is. Watch this. Point number three. I'm about to mess myself up real good right here. Hallelujah. Point number three. Hey, the text is designed to teach us not to discount, discredit, or diss the messenger. I'm about to mess up real bad right here. Third point, the text is designed to teach us is not to diss, not to discount, Discredit the messenger. I'm just the messenger. And my responsibility, as well as any other preacher that stands up in this pulpit, is to tell you that your blessing is at the door. What you're looking for from God is at the door. But it's going to take repentance. It's going to take forgiveness. It's going to take you getting past the iron gate of your will to get what God is about to give to you. The Bible says that Rhoda came to the door say, hey, and for gladness she didn't open the door hey for all intents and purposes we'll say that Rhoda was a heavy set black girl we'll say that she wore a spiky weave in her hair we'll say her name is Rhoda and for gladness she wouldn't let them in but her responsibility was to let somebody know that God has got your miracle
door. At the door. At the door. How could 